YouTube Visual Gaming Network and welcome to episode 16 of our Mario game in Java tutorial. Last episode we created and drew sprites into our game. This episode we're going to be implementing player animation into our game. Now if we go into GIMP, as you can see, I created a little player animation. Not the best animation, but it's okay. And it's better than that orange guy last episode. And yeah, I just move the grass sprite because there was no point keeping it on the second sort of grid. So just go into our game class and change the coordinates of grass to 1, 1. And for public static sprite player we're going to actually make that an array and then and then we'll type player is equal to new sprite and then we have to see how many uh, player frames there are. So there are one, two, three, four, five. Then then there's the other side, so there's 10 frames. So in here, we're gonna put 10. And then to initialize all of them, we're gonna create a for loop. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than player dot length i plus plus. Then player i is equal to a new sprite. And that would be, uh, it will be sheet. Then the x coordinate will be i plus 1. And then let's figure out the y coordinate. So I'm just going to zoom out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Alright, so then the y coordinate is 16. So now to implement it, we're going to have to create a few variables. First in our entity class, we're actually going to a new public int and it's going to be facing. So public int facing is equal to zero. And I'm just going to make a comment here. And zero would be left and one would be right. And we'll make it so when we're facing left, facing is equal to zero. And when we're facing right, facing is equal to one. So now we're going to go into our player class and create some more variables. What? Oh yeah, don't worry, I'll just make this a comment and we'll fix this after. And because we, I've actually changed my bar sprite sheet, I need to remember to export it again. And now I have to actually refresh our project folder. So our sprite sheet image in our res folder will update. So our variables are going to be private int frame is equal to zero. And then private int frame delay is equal to zero. So our frame delay variable will be the amount of times the game updates before it actually changes frame during the animation. So if we go below our if falling method, I'm just going to type uh, frame delay plus plus and then we'll create another if statement if frame delay is let's say is greater or equal to let's say three then frame plus plus which will add one to frame and if frame is greater than or equal to game dot player dot dot length or oh my bad then frame is equal to zero and at the end of our if statement we're just going to type frame delay is equal to zero all right so now if we go up here we're going to create an if statement let's type if facing is equal to zero then i'm just going to cut this and paste it into our if statement so if facing is equal to zero We'll, then we'll draw image, then we'll say game dot player frame plus five dot get buffer image, and this is the image that it will draw. And why we put frame plus five is because uh, let's say these guys are facing left and 
we want these guys are facing left and they are about uh, five grid blocks ahead of the right guys so if we don't put frame plus five here then it will just start at the right guy and although we want it to be the left guy so we'll just put frame plus five and then we're going to type else if facing is equal to one then g dot draw image game not played then frame and just move the plus five on the end because the amount of frames our player runs on each side is five we're just going to change if frame is greater than or equal to game dot player dot length to if frame is greater than or equal to five so now if we run our game as you can see our player is actually starting to animate as you can see it animates fine but but yeah there's problems first uh, the air this needs to be transparent so if you're in GIMP just click on your background or whatever layer you're using for these players then click add alpha channel then use kind of this fuzzy select tool select the area of your players then just set it to transparent alright and just remember to export it and then refresh your project folder so now if we run it alright as you can see our player animates but if we go uh, left it's facing left but it doesn't go right if we're trying to move right and it animates all the time even if we're not uh, moving so we're gonna fix that now so uh, let's go to our key input class I'm gonna type Ian dot facing is equal to zero under case key event dot vka and Ian dot facing is equal to one okay so now we're gonna go back into our player class and create a private boolean so private boolean animate is equal to false okay so here we're gonna type if val x does not equal to zero animate is equal to true else animate is equal to false so that'll just check if our player is moving or not okay and uh, we're just gonna type if animate and then we're gonna copy all of this animation code and paste it into our if statement so now if we run our game alright if we try moving as you can see our player moves fine alright but I'm not gonna wrap up this episode here yet. I've still got one more thing to do let's say if we jump up as you can see there's a tiny bit of delay before we actually start falling again and we don't want that and so let's just say I walk off the edge as you can see it takes a while for me to actually start falling down okay so now we're gonna I'm just gonna remove this if x is equal to 0 or if x plus width is greater than uh, 1080 alright so to fix that in our get bounds top dot intersect t dot get bounds method we're just gonna set gravity to something like 0 0.8 so gravity will have a greater value when we start falling. So now if we run our game, all right, we'll try it. There you go, as you can see, our player starts falling down straight away. And uh, if we try to run off, yeah, pretty much starts falling down straight away. So I'm gonna wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. And uh, if your friend is interested in learning how to make games in Java, then please send them this tutorial. I'll really appreciate it. Alright, so I'll see you guys soon.